Welcome to Word of Power. Jeannie and John Alcott are honored to have you be a part of this powerful time with God. We believe He connected you with us to hear this Word. You can be empowered and blessed during this time. So allow the Spirit of God to speak to your heart in a personal way. Then believe for miracles. At the end of the broadcast, be sure to share your needs and desires with Jeannie and John for personal prayer. Now, listen for a word of power for your life. It's so good to be together today. This is Jeannie Alcott. In this message, God is telling you about the victory that He has for your life. And that should give you peace and happiness. No matter what you're facing, He has a victory for you. But now it's up to you. You have to reach out and take it. Don't allow your successful outcome not to come about and just set there dormant. That's what can happen if we don't have the willingness to fight anymore. We don't have the eagerness to conquer and win what's in our heart. And that can happen because time drags on or you're striving but maybe you don't get good reports or any reports at all. Some days you wake up not feeling too good. You know how that is. Or circumstances aren't going your way. So of course it's hard to be raring to go and get your victory. But don't think your efforts are not producing and stop them. Stay eager. Stay eager to get your victory. That's how you're going to see it manifest. Even at times when you don't feel you're being heard, continue to pray. Express God's words and His promises. Keep that willingness in you because God takes note and He hears and sees what you're doing in order to get your victory. There's a story about this that has always made an impression on me because it's so true to human nature. This is what we want to do sometimes because we're not seeing significant results in our life. The story is about a famous conductor who was in a practice session with his orchestra and they had been joined by a tremendous chorus. So you can imagine all the sounds that were moving around that stage. Sounds of the orchestra and the chorus, trumpets blaring, drums rolling, violins creating a melody, and the singers joining in. But about halfway into the session, the piccolo player decided to stop playing. He said to himself, What good am I doing? I just have this piccolo. It's so small. I might as well not be playing. Nobody can hear me anyway. So he just held the instrument as if he was playing, but didn't make any sound. That way he figured the conductor couldn't tell. But after just a few moments of his doing that, the conductor began to raise his arms in the air, and he yelled, Stop! Stop! Where is the piccolo? That piccolo player figured he couldn't make a difference, so he didn't stay eager to keep working and playing to produce the beautiful sound in that orchestra. But you see, the conductor knew... He knew that instrument made a difference and that he couldn't have success in his orchestra if it wasn't being played. God wants success for you and what you desire in your life, but he knows it isn't going to happen if you don't keep playing the piccolo. When you stop believing and praying, the great conductor in heaven stops the orchestra and hushes the singers, and then he begins to cry out, Stop! Stop! I can't hear! And then he says your name. He can't hear your words of faith. He doesn't hear your heart speaking confidence and belief. They've been muted, perhaps out of discouragement or fatigue or fear. Whatever the reason, believe that you can still overcome those and take your victory. You just have to stay eager, raring to go, ready to do what you must do. Keep playing your piccolo and know that you'll see success because of it. And when the times get tough, remember what you have before you. You have victory waiting for you. And also remember this, God will give you the strength you need and the courage to stay willing to do what you need to do. He will help you take that victory and make it yours. I want to take you now to a story in the scriptures about Joshua and the Israelites. This is in Joshua chapter 18, and it's talking about when they were right in the midst of defeating the enemies in the new territory which God had promised them. This place was just brimming with beauty, and it was productive, a very desirable property. So at first, they were gung-ho. They were eager to get in and establish their homes and families and prosper and just enjoy life. But after they had been fighting the enemies for a while and defeating them, there came a time when they started feeling weary of war. It wasn't an easy task, and they were tired of what they had to do to get their victory in Canaan. So they decided to stop. 
Now, there isn't a problem with resting at times. In fact, it's important that we rest at the proper time. But if we become complacent and we don't have the willingness and excitement to go on, then we'll give up. We'll pass our victory on to someone else. Don't pass your victory on to someone else. Don't give it away. Stay eager to make it yours. Joshua could tell his people were starting to lose it. They didn't have the eagerness to strive for the promise anymore. They were just going to set down the promise. That is why God is coming to you now, to make sure you don't set down the promise. Keep the willingness to strive for it, even when you've been fighting for a while and you're weary of war. If you don't, then the promise will fade away. That's what Joshua knew was happening. Every day that the people refused to fight, the enemies would become more entrenched. Then it would be harder to occupy the blessing God had for them. And that's what happens to us in a spiritual way. If we start waning in our spiritual fight of faith, evil spirit forces become entrenched more. Then they think they have us. We're not going to take our victory, but they are going to take it. They see that we're too tired or discouraged or fearful to oust them. We're not taking over and occupying the blessing God has for us. We're setting down the promise. Because Joshua could tell that this was happening, the Bible says that he called the people together and he addressed them. He said, How long are you going to sit around on your hands, putting off taking possession of the land that God, the God of your ancestors, has given you? Then he gave them a task. He said for them to do a survey of all the territory remaining so they could make the final decisions on how to divide it among the tribes. In other words, he was giving them an impetus to get up and get going again. They needed to realize it was there. The promise was right before them. So they needed to look around and take a survey of it and start saying, this part is mine. That's the property I want. He wanted them to get that desire in their heart pumping again. And I encourage you to do it right now. Get your desire in your heart pumping again. Say, this is mine. That's what I want. This victory is for me. I'm going to take it. That gets you excited again, eager, willing to fight and defeat the enemy so you can take your victory. Once the people of Israel did that, they were raring to go again. They could see what was before them, and they were ready to take possession of it. So they got up and started moving. Get up and start moving again. I mean, if you've been down in your thoughts or emotions or spirit, you can get moving again. You can take possession of what's waiting for you. Because those Hebrews did that, the Bible says, So God gave Israel the entire land that he had vowed to give to their ancestors. They took possession of it and made themselves at home in it. And God gave them rest on all sides as he had vowed to their ancestors. Not a single one of their enemies was able to stand up to them. God handed over all their enemies to them. Not one word failed from all the good words that God spoke to the house of Israel. Everything came out right. Everything is going to come out right. Not one good word is going to fail that God has spoken to you. Believe it today, in spite of the challenges you're facing, in spite of the weariness that tries to take over. Set aside the disappointment of how things are dragging on and get raring to go because it's before you. The promise of the possession is before you. And as you move forward to take it, God says not one of your enemies will be able to stand up to you. He's handing them over to you. He's handing the enemies of difficulty and distress over to you. Not one will be able to stand up to you. And then... Then you will see the good words that God spoke into your heart come to pass. They won't fail. Everything will come out right. You'll have your victory. Do as the Israelites. Take possession of it and make yourself at home. Make yourself at home in the promise of God for your life. Let's show him right now that you're eager to receive what he has waiting for you. We're going to take it. Let's pray. Oh God, you have spoken such good words over my friend, and you have promised they'll come to pass as they continue to fight. So I ask you this day to encourage them. Give them extra strength. Remove the burden from their back. Remove the hurt from their heart. Make them ready to fight for their right, the right to receive the promise from you. 
those good things, the good things that you spoke to them and they know should be a part of their life. We're going to make those theirs now. We're reaching out to take their victory. They're going to make their home in the blessings and the reward that you have for them. As Joshua said, we're not going to put off taking possession. We're going in. That desire in their heart is pumping again. They see what you have for them. They've taken a survey of the territory. And now they're saying, that's mine. This victory is for me. I'm taking it. So we do that now by our faith in you. We say, in the name of Jesus, we take our victory. Amen and amen. I encourage you, don't put off taking possession of what God has for you. Stay eager. Be raring to go to see his promise fulfilled. And God has called us to help take you into all the good waiting for you. John and I are here to pray by your side and stand in faith, to encourage you and help you see victory. We know you have needs and we're ready to help you see those met. As that scripture said, not one good word will fail of all the good words that God spoke to you. Everything will come out right. So be sure to share and tell us how we can pray for you. Then after we intercede, we're going to send you words that will speak to your heart from God's heart. So stay eager and contact us soon. Okay, I'm going to give you a spiritual power line now. This is a line of power. It's faith words. And as you express them from your heart, God can activate them. I have to tell you that I receive so many comments about this spiritual power line. People know how to hook their faith onto it. So it's very powerful. One note that I received from a woman said that she and her husband text the power line to each other almost every day. Sometimes, even if they're in the same room, they'll text it to each other. They race to see who can do it first. See, they get excited because they know these power lines are the truth of God. And as you express them, you can see them come to pass. So go around saying, I take my victory. I take my victory. And we're going to help you do that. So be sure to get this entire message. We'll send you all five parts of it and the prayer times. Just request, take your victory. It's offer number AM742. That's 742. We can send you a CD for a gift of $8 into the ministry. Or you can download it from our website for a gift of $5. That's alcottministries.org. A-L-C-O-T-T ministries dot O-R-G. Now, I want to encourage you to be sure that you have received our gift to you. This is a power packet. We put together this package every quarter, and we stuff it full of good spiritual encouragement, faith-building stuff, and good information and special offers. And in this new packet, John and I invite you to be a part of a special prayer day. We want to pray over you in a personal way, so be sure to request the power packet. We even put a recipe in there. This is our gift to you. I look so forward to being with you again tomorrow. God has so many good things to speak into your life. This is Jeannie Alcott. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Jeannie and John encourage you to take this opportunity to receive personal prayer. When you contact them, they will lay hands on what you share and pray with faith. Then send you a letter filled with God's Word for your life. You can write to Alcott Ministries, Post Office Box 3400, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013, or call 918-459-9191. You can also receive ministry and request items through our website at alcottministries.org. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries.org. There you can also listen to Word of Power broadcasts. Now be sure to request this teaching and Jeannie and John ask you to join them in giving a gift today to be a part of this great work for God. Don't miss the next Word of Power for you.